Hello and welcome! It's Gauntlet of Greatness time once again. We're down to the semi-finals of this tournament. 16 viewers sent deck lists in. We played out a regular season by dividing them up into four groups of four. Top two from each group made the playoffs. We played the quarterfinals, and now here we are. There are just four decks left. There's Twin versus Elves. There's Dredge and Death and Taxes. Winners will play next week, and... To be clear, there's probably a new contender in uh, No Bandless Modern. Doesn't actually have any cards in it that are banned, but what we're going to do next week for the finals is whoever wins the tournament is going to see if they can take down the Eldrazi Menace that just won the last Pro Tour. That's next week, though. We'll bring the Eldrazi in next week. For now, Rashad Miller's Dredge deck against Ben Braz's Death and Taxes. Whoever winds up designing the deck that won, that wins the tournament gets a box of Modern Masters, courtesy of our sponsor, Card Kingdom. Um, everybody who made the top eight gets a little bit of store credit. So, cool stuff. Here's the Death and Taxes deck. It is Thalia's and Vryn Wingmare's full set, all eight copies of that effect. Uh, there's some mental missteps. There's some acceleration. There's a Stoneforge package. And plenty more hate in the sideboard, too. Stony Silence and, very relevant for this matchup, Rest in Peace. So, the Dredge deck is has looked kind of impressive. i got to be honest. Of all the decks, you tell me what you think, Shadow. I feel like this is the one that has looked the most impressive up to this stage of the tournament. Is that fair? I agree, I agree completely. Um, sorry, I'm eating. Yes, um, I do. <laughs> This one and uh, the twin, Splinter Twin. Yeah, Splinter Twin has looked good, too. You've got Discard Effects are Faithless Looting, Dangerous Wager, and Tormenting Voice. I love how Dangerous Wager, it's like, I get to discard my whole hand and then draw two cards? Awesome, sign me up. Uh, but, yeah, what you don't get in this versus the Legacy or Vintage versions of the Dredge deck is you don't get Cabal Therapy and you don't get Icarid. So there's not a lot of ways to sack your creatures. It's basically all about the Dread Return. Uh, but with enough bridges in your graveyard, one Dread Return for Flamekin is still entirely capable of winning the game. Sphinx of Lost Truths is the, uh, the cool tech, I think. I hadn't seen before until Rashad came up with it for this list. Uh, definitely a way to let you kind of keep going and finish dredging the rest of your, gra your deck into your graveyard. So what do you think? You got a prediction on this one, Shadow? Um... I mean, I feel like it still leans towards death and tax. Uh, sorry, it's, it leans towards dredge, leans and I'm rooting dredge. for dredge. Yeah, I think it leans towards dredge. I, I'm rooting for dredge, uh, but that said, I'd like to see death and taxes take you down because I'm piloting it. <laughs> that is fair. I, there's a lot of hate in that DNT list. Like, if you draw the right hate cards, I, the, my deck's a little bit on the fragile side. I mean, it's powerful, but it is somewhat fragile. So I, I feel like this is a match that could go either way. Um, a lot of it comes down to your draws, I think. I think so. So, all right, let's see what happens. I am uh, hosting a new match. Constructed open play getting serious. Come fight me. All right, I'm muting you. Yeah. See you after the match. I'll mute you on Skype. We can chat more later. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Spot in the finals on the line. Here we go. Ah, lost the die roll. Less than ideal. Uh, this straw has no mana. And no dredgers. Easy mulligan. He kept seven. That's not great. Uh, so I can... Ca oh, yeah! This is turn one. I can cast Dangerous Wager using Spirit Guide. And then immediately start dredging. So it's definitely a keeper. I get destroyed by Thalia, though. Do I keep bridge? I mean, bridge is so important. If he doesn't play turn one Thalia, I will want this bridge. I don't think I can. I don't think I can assume turn one Thalia. He has to have the Chrome Mox and the Thalia to do that to me. So, yeah, I'm gonna keep my bridge. I mean, the thing is, even if I push it, I don't know that I'm gonna find mana. And yeah, this is so much more often his turn one. It's just something dorky like an Ether Vial. All right. Discard my hand. Start dredging. Is 
Stinkweed finds... Did not find a dredger. Awkward. I found a Narc Amoeba. So I have a Dread Return, but I need three creatures in play to do anything with that. I have a Faithless Looting that I can flash back, but I have to get to three mana. I have Blood Gas, but I have to play a mana. Yeah, that was that was a swing and a miss on the Stinkweed Imp Dredge. That could be bad. I basically have to draw lands now, because I'm nowhere near natural discarding with a full hand. Yeah, I gotta draw mana, and I gotta draw mana. I probably have to draw it relatively quickly. Blah! Maybe Narc Amoeba can go all the way, right? Oh, ghost Quarter, seriously? Seriously. So bad. I have no basics in my list. Like, I, maybe I'm supposed to have basics. That Chrome Box. Ah, there's so much hate in this deck. Death and taxes should just be called hate. Hate and hate. And more hate after sideboarding. It's really bad for me. I mean, I was already pinned where I couldn't do anything without drawing lands. And... Now I have to draw multiple lands. Now, I mean, I have. I guess what I really have to do now is hope he does nothing offensive and I can start discarding Stinkweed Imp every turn because my hand is full. There's only one Blood Gas, too, so even finding one land doesn't turn on Dredger turn because I'll only have two creatures in play. I get a blood gas. The other thing is, like, I mean, the, if I fight with Rin Wingmare, I'm going to lose my bridge. Non-token creature will be put into my opponent's graveyard. Um, sorry, a creature will be put into my opponent's graveyard. So I lose my bridge. If we trade, I get a zombie. I, I assume I, like, yeah, they're both trick. Both abilities will trigger if we trade. I'll get a zombie, but I'll lose my one bridge. I don't think I'm supposed to. I mean, I guess wow, I could hold Gemstone because eventually I can start discarding Stinkweed Imp and not get the Blood Ghast. Does that make any sense? Yeah. I mean, I can't do anything with one mana. I guess I can't do anything with two mana because of Tormenting Voice. Because I can't cast Tormenting Voice while Ren Wingmare is there. Like, I could trade and then turn on two mana. I think I hold cards. I think, like, Natural Discard is actually a thing that could come up here. Yeah, he's going to attack into me. I I don't think I want to trade my bridge for just a zombie. Like, I'm not currently planning to actually cast spells. So, yeah, you can have one, one Vryn Wingmare for a little while. Let's see what happens now. Yeah, he's out of stuff. All right. I mean, I'm going to get to discard and start dredging before I die. Is I not supposed to attack? He's going to surprise me with another Vryn Wingmare and force this trade. Yeah. Huh.
Interesting. Maybe I'm just not supposed to attack. I don't know. Felt like the damage race, like with between blood ghasts and zombies, that I might actually have a damage race here. In fact, he's got one card in his hand. I think I am going to play this land because it gets a blood ghast. And blood ghast plus zombie currently wins the damage race. Like, I delay my ability to discard Stinkweed Imp by one turn, but in exchange, I'm now a actually ahead on board. I don't know. We'll try it. I mean, I'm obviously in this super awkward spot. Like, I can't cast any spells, and I whiffed on my first dredge, so... Gotta gamble one way or the other. Mm-hmm. Sally are going to come swooping down and first strike me to death. Excellent. Maybe he'll draw nothing. That doesn't look like nothing. That looks like a hard cast large thing. Oh, lingering souls? Okay, that's annoying. I'm not winning a race against Lingering Souls. I think I attack. Like, I'm going to have to draw land to win this game, which would bring the blood gas back. So I actually buy myself turns if I get him to block. I'm not going to have a bridge in my yard anytime soon. But I mean, if he just attacks me with fire, yeah, he's not even going to block because he's he knows he's ahead in the race. So Definitely vindicates my attack. Yeah. Uh. Oh, sign still says practice match. Apologies. This is the real match. It is zero to zero. Playing best two out of three here in the semifinals. And this is game one. Oh, not a oh, it's heck edge. I thought it was ghost quarter for a minute. Ghost quarter would have been really bad. Tech edge is I'm not gonna get to four, it's not gonna matter. But I'm running out of turns. Four and then six. I have basically two more turns. Now we're at seven cards, so this isn't going to be good enough, right? I get next turn. I'm not. I'm going to get to discard the Stinkweed Imp, and then I'm never going to get the turn to dredge it with my draw step. Awkward. If I never played the Gemstone then I would have gotten to discard a Stinkweed Imp this turn. I never would have had Bloodgast. So, I mean, he wouldn't be at 7. He'd be at, like, 19 or 20 or whatever. I wonder if that's better. This probably is. I mean, it turns out I lose this race. Oh, jeez. Okay. Stoneforge can potentially get Batter Skull, which means I'm definitely losing this race. I can also get Jitte to kill future bridges. But I just... I never got another dredger into the yard. You get the Jitte. Yeah, so he can get some counters. With this attack... I don't think there's anything I can draw. I mean, I have to discard dredgers to get my engine going, and this means I don't have a, I don't have a way to do it for zero. Oh well. Hmm. Weird game.
So, Death and Taxes takes the first one. He's got Rest in Peace, so I have to bring in answers to Rest in Peace. I basically can't win with that card in play. Abrupt Decay also has the ability to kill Athalia, which I don't even know if that's a thing that happens. It can kill a Jitte. Maybe I just want more Nature's Claims. The life isn't super relevant. And like the thing is Abrupt Decay, it can't be countered, but Thalia prevents me from playing it. it seems super expensive in those worlds. Uh, the other thing I get is I get Elish Norn as a thing that I can just randomly reanimate to basically win the game. I mean, I guess he'll probably path in out of fear of Elish Norn, but it's still amazing. Um, the thing that I don't think I want against him is a bunch of, like, the acceleration cards. Plus these Fate Stitchers are kind of dorky. Yeah, I think I want to do something like this. I mean, on the play, I like the acceleration a little bit more. Oh, I don't need the second flame can zealot. It. It's really a backup. Yeah, we'll try it like this. Uh, this is turn two dangerous wager with two dredgers, so I'm going to keep it. Yeah, I can't. I can't mulligan this hand. It's another hand that's vulnerable to turn one Thalia. I guess I'm also vulnerable to turn one Ghost Quarter. Not that he knows that. Oh, hilariously, I play the Dakmore Salvage. I'm not even vulnerable to turn one. Turn one Ghost Quarter does me favor! Sounds like he's deep in the tank. With his opening seven. Or he wandered away from the computer to check on his kid or something. All right, he keeps. So yeah, deck more salvage first. Needed to be untapped anyway and essentially plays around Ghost Quarter. Skull Clamp. I don't care about Skull Clamp. Oh, this is an instant? That doesn't do anything. I just want to do this main phase, right? See what happens? Yeah, hypothetically, like things could go nuts here. I'm mildly annoyed to have to discard that City of Brass, but... See what happens. Grave Troll finds a Grave Troll, a Bridge, a Stinkweed Imp. So I'm going to get stuff on my draw step. Second Grave Troll finds some other things. No Narc Amoebas. And did we hit a Dakmore Salvage? We did not hit a Dakmore Salvage, which means I can't get the Blood Ghast. I mean, I'm just going to, I'm going to get Grave Troll and hope that the looting, the, the dredging alone does stuff. All right, we're started. What is he up to? I guess he kept a sketchy one? Did he keep no white mana? All right, Grave Troll finds... Not much. I mean, I have Dread Returns, but I have no free creatures. I haven't found a Dakmore Salvage either. Crazy. Uh, can't flashback Faithless Looting. Man, I just want to hit a Dakmore Salvage and get a land. I mean, I'm only playing a couple. Obviously, it's a pretty weak card. It only dredges two, and it comes into play tapped. But there are some times where you're just like desperate for a mana and or desperate to bring back blood ghasts. It's only one blood ghast, but still. 
There's the stupid rest in peace. Wow. Okay, he kept rest in peace, no white mana, and crossed his fingers and got there. That's so bad. Nothing I can do about it. So what do I lose? I lose lots of things. I'm down one blood gas, one bridge, one dread return. I mean, recoverable, but bad. Oh, how many of my ways to blow it up did I lose? I lost nature's claim, one nature's claim. Wow. Oh, the hate. Yeah, what did I lose? The game. <laughs> I haven't actually lost the game yet. It is recoverable, this position I'm in. But it'll be hard. Man, both these games, I had a super fast dredger. And it just wasn't good enough. Like, I didn't really string it into anything. Like, this game, I needed I needed to get free creatures so that I could dread return things. And I just failed to get any of my free creatures into play. Last game, I did failed to dredge into dredgers. Yeah, we're going to lose. <laughs> All the powerful stuff you can do in No Bandless Modern, and turns out hate is more powerful than anything constructive. What is this? Hypothetically, I can draw a discard spell and a way to blow up Rust in Peace on back-to-back -back draw steps. Like, mathematically, I think I could stack my deck and maybe get out of this. Only maybe. Huh. Now I'm not even sure I could stack and get out of this. I know I did just call Dredge a constructive deck, but, like, I have a strategy. I'm trying to do a thing. It's funny, when I was looking through the deck list that people sent in, there were a lot of people who just wanted to be on the hater side. There were a lot of hate decks. I mean, I chose this one because it, I mean, it looked the best to me. But there were a lot of people who were just, ah, you can do all this cool broken stuff, but no. Let us play main deck chalices and rests in pieces and thalias. And this was by no means the only one of these that came in. Yeah, I'm just dead. Huh. Fine, just the flyers. That's enough. I've had enough, Shadow. That, that's that's fair. Um, You're such a hater. Rest in peace. That card is fair against your deck. Fair, no. balanced. Not even a little bit. Not even a little bit. Oh well. <laughs> well, it's through. Yeah. I mean, look, the deck earned it. It beat two very good decks. Stoneforge was a one seed, had looked very good. Dredge was a one seed, had looked very good. DT was actually the two seed coming out of its group. It basically, all it had done before the playoffs was beat Storm twice, which, duh. Right. Of course it's going to beat Storm. I guess Breach Post was the one seed out of that group, which also looked really good, but has lost. So I guess it's funny, Splinter Twins is the last one seed standing. Well, let's see how let's see how it does against elves. Yeah, let us see how it does against elves.